the automobile. First invented in the 19th century, its core formula has basically remained the same for all these years. A body, an engine, and four wheels. Sometimes three. This lack of progress and innovation is actually astonishing, if you think about it. Planes, which were invented later, went from this to this. Rockets went from exploding 9 out of 10 times to now landing themselves. Heck, even trains have evolved more than cars, going from rails to magic. But on the other hand, cars have just gained weight, become more complex, and are not uglier. This lack of development in the automotive industry is even clearer if you take a look at the infrastructure surrounding it. As for planes, airports went from being flatter than average fields to multi-billion dollar megastructures. Rocket launch pads have kinda stayed the same, but, but, but trains don't need rails anymore. But roads, roads have been the f***ing same, not since the car was invented, but since these dudes were fighting over... More than 2,000 years, and roads are the same. Debatably, even worse. Why though? Innovation comes from a problem. Whatever that problem may be, big brain humans will do anything to solve it. Paper planes can't go fast enough? Don't make them out of paper. Rockets suck? I don't know, invent Elon Musk. Taxes? Buy NFTs. Yet, cars have the exact same problems they had when they were first invented. What are these problems, you may ask? Try driving on this. What about this? Does this image scare you? Exactly. Cars are betas and are only limited to roads similar to your girlfriend. Flat and dry. The main problem with cars lies within their method of propulsion. The engine sends power to the wheels, making cars physically limited by traction. No matter how much power your engine outputs, how many wheels your car has, and how much your mum weighs, you will always be limited by the coefficient of traction between the tyres and the road. This is a problem of truly massive proportions, both for versatility, but especially for safety. Imagine being unable to stop your car because there's some water on the road. So, how exactly do you solve this problem? With this. Instead of sending power to the wheels, you send it to a propeller, making the lack of traction a thing of the past. This has already been tented before, but the automotive overlords, scared of their products becoming obsolete, have violently repressed this revolution. But ladies and gentlemen, this changes today. This is the Ibishu Propgen. It is based on the much-loved Ibishu Pigeon, but instead of a bed, it sports a wooden propeller. So later in the video, I will be showing you that this car is actually usable in the day-to-day, -day, but before that, I'm gonna load it in the plane and take it to the testing field. So guys, you know, we're on the plane now and this is the perfect opportunity for an announcement. I made a t-shirt. So if you're not interested, just skip forward, but if you are, you can get 5 bucks off of one if you're a Sigma channel member. How much does a Sigma membership cost? 5 bucks. Basically, you get membership, you buy t-shirt with discount code, and you get free membership. Okay, back to the video. So here we are in grid map, and we are ready to begin the comparison. But you know, to compare the propeller car to an equivalent wheeled-powered car, we need somebody else to drive the wheeled-powered car. And you know, since I have no friends and the recording team has managed to escape my basement, this may be a problem. But luckily, AI exists. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our virtual guest, which should be arriving here any time now. Ah, uh, I, I think that's him. He seems a little disoriented. So it's been five minutes now. I, I can still hear his engine, but... What the f- Like, I can hear him getting closer. Is he here? Yes. But you know, our virtual guest here doesn't have a name. So I think- I think we should give him one. Estaba un día en mi cantón viendo Pau Patrol y chingándome unas papitas.
And Pablo he is. Very nice. Pero de repente me dieron ganas de chingarme unas quesadillas. So you know what? It is time to begin the comparison. Boy is that cool. Come on, Pablo. Very good. What the fuck? He is kinda misbehaving. Así que fui a mi cocina y me... Anyways, we are going to the testing ground. Right? Ah, uh, Pablo, pa oh my fucking god. Where is he going? What the f <laughs> Pablo! What the f is he doing? Pablo is on cr So we are finally at the testing grounds to test traction. And yeah, Pablo is... He's enjoying himself. So later we will also test the inclines, as you can see there. That is gonna be very interesting, especially for Pablo. But before that... So I'm gonna bring up the magic UI. So Benny, if you have all the weird engine stats for you nerds out there, but up at the top is the important metric. The airspeed. This is how fast we're moving, okay? So we're starting off with what seems to be dirt. And theoretically, our acceleration should be the same on every type of terrain. But yeah, let's just find out. Let's say that went pretty well. Pablo is also doing all right. A few problems. Puta madre. But you know, dirt is pretty easy. What isn't easy is ice. So here we go, I guess. And as you can see, but Pablo over there, he is not having a good time. I don't think we're doing a good job of comparing the two. Pablo is not cooperating, unfortunately. I think I will have to... <laughs> He's just zooming. <laughs> so we will now test the mud. Come, come on, Pablo, come on. There, there's space for you. Yes. Very good, boy. So mud test, here it goes. We were going pretty quick. Pablo, however, he is going pretty darn slow. So yeah, this is yet another win for the propeller car. The grass is kind of boring, okay, so nah. Sand, uh, yeah, sand, the same thing. What I am very interested to test, though, is the... Pablo, not now, what the fuck? Compralo, sé que te vas a pinar. So it is now time to test the... So hopefully Pablo is willing to cooperate more than he did before now. And we are ready for the test. So I'm just gonna go pretty slow here. Nothing to, you know, Pablo is moving. Come on, Pablo. Yes. Yes. And as you can see, he is struggling really bad. So let's see if he makes it. Oh, Pablo, what the fuck? <laughs> this is just a friend reminder to like and subscribe, and also check out the Clips channel. So as you can see, Pablo is struggling really bad with the ice. He's just getting no traction at all. But we, on the other hand, absolutely no problem. Same thing with braking. Just flip it in reverse, and as you can see, you can brake no problem. And just like that, we have come to a stop. But now it is time for the wall. So not only is the wall 60 degrees incline at its peak, but it is also covered in ice. As you can see, the thing is absolutely massive. So you know what? I'm gonna let Pablo go first. So Pablo, whenever you're ready. Todos los países de México tales como Culiacán, Esparta y Tepito. That was actually a lot better than expected. But to be fair, he was on extra grippy asphalt. We, on the other hand, do not have that luxury. 
And this may turn out to be very interesting indeed. Holy fuck! So taking it slow and easy, this looks so wrong being used to normal cars, you know? And while also landing a trick, it has managed the wall on ice. And you know, just to flex at this point, I am also going to do it downwards. Look at that, absolutely no problem at all. But now, it is time for the most important test. Is a propeller car with the same exact engine as a wheel-driven car as fast or even faster? But since Pablo has decided to escape, I'm gonna have to call somebody else. Keith! Hello. Fuck! <laughs> no! <laughs> He's zooming! It is superior! So it is faster in raw acceleration, but what about top speed? So it's a wonderful day here in Norte, the sun is shining, you can smell... What the fuck? Are you serious? Are you fu- Ma io? Ma io che cosa ho fatto di male? Anyways, it was a great day, but it isn't anymore. So we're now in the prop gin, ready to go get some nice, sweet ke- So it is time to turn it on. This never gets old. And just like that, we can set off. So our speedo is reading the correct speeds, of course. You know, that's probably the only issue with this vehicle. But yeah, now I want to show you some nice, smooth city driving. And you know what? It's not bad. Actually, to be honest, it is a lot easier than driving a regular car. This has to be the perfect city car. What the f***? This could actually- <laughs> So one problem you may think a propeller-powered car would have is noise. But to be honest, that is not the case. You know, apart from when you're accelerating, it's actually pretty silent because it's always idling. This vehicle is on a new level of efficiency. And also, it's just a really simple design. An engine, a belt, and a propeller. It's that simple. And when you push it, holy f I am actually astonished that this hasn't caught on. Enough city, it is time to head for the highway. Is this a roundabout? It is! Perfect. So it is now the time to demonstrate how good of a highway cruiser this is. Why is everybody still? Why do they stop? But now it can shine. Look at that, this guy is moving. Watch as we fly past him. Ah, oh, he's gonna stop right off. Oh, Boy, is it quick! But you know, now that I have proven to you that this is an actually usable car, I want to take you to the airport because there's just one more thing I want to show you. So you know airplanes, right? They can go basically wherever they want, making them insanely efficient. Just imagine for a second, what if we could combine the convenience of the car with the efficiency and the freedom of a plane? This is the Fligion. It's basically a prop gen that traded a wheel for wings. And boy, is it worth the price.
This is a day I never thought I'd see. We are actually airborne in an Ibishu pigeon. Today, humanity has peaked. This vehicle, it is just perfection.